Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I was about to make a video on filter press uh, operation industrial layer life problems as I promised the previous week. But uh, I have changed my plans because of this one query from one of our subscribers. As she correctly put up that this is a season when the placement seasons are uh, coming to a drought end and a fresh lot of companies are coming on campus and there are several opportunities also that are coming off campus. And here is the perfect time to actually put up your CV in the market. Uh, so that you make yourself placeable. Uh, so uh, in the wake of making yourself placeable, there are a few things that you need to mention in your CV. And if you are applying for a core technical company, you should uh, add some points specifically to the structuralization of your CV and I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about all branches of engineering as a whole because there are several points that are covered as a whole for all engineering branches when you are applying for a core technical job. So I have previously made a video on CV making uh, when it was a generalized CV making that is for any company that was eligible. Here I'm going to talk about how to make a CV for a core technical interview or core technical company that you are appearing for apply or applying for. So here are a few points that you must keep in mind when you are applying for a core technical profile. So the uh, firstly, you need to focus or emphasize more on your internships, more on your trainings, more on the learnings from the same. And if you have a professional background, like if you have been working or associated with a company and then you are wishing to switch the company, then you should mention the skill set or the learnings from that particular profile that you have been uh, associated with or the uh, perks of that company and what have you learned throughout your uh, uh, experience in that particular company. So these are the few things that you should mention. So uh, coming straight away to the topic, uh, firstly, what uh, changes I have done to my CV when I am uh, applying to a technically uh, sound profile where you need to prove yourself that you are technically sound. First of all, compress your CV. Yes, mostly technical companies or tech companies as a whole, if I talk about core companies as a whole, they do not consider a two page or a three page CV as a very good virtue of the candidate. They generally look for one page CVs, particularly in the West, there is a culture of having a one page curriculum writing. So it's very important that you compress your CV. So the first thing that I would suggest you to do is straight away compress your CV. Try to bring it to one page. So try to omit unnecessary details like personal details, uh, father's name, mother's name, your date of birth, your hobbies. Try to omit that. Try to bring out more of professional experience sharing, more of the learnings from the professional courses or certifications that you have gathered, more of your major achievements in the field of professional and uh, personal abilities when it reflects core technical abilities in particular. So uh, what I have done is uh, I have uh, attached a CV uh, sample, uh, my uh, personal CV I have attached in the description. So you can straight away click to the Google Drive link and download the same. And I'm going to talk about those specific points in particular. First of all, omit your personal information. And even if you want to keep your personal information like your address or mobile number or mail ID, which you are supposed to keep in your curriculum by day, I would suggest you either put a header. What I have done is I have put a header at the top of the page, uh, giving my address, my mobile number, that is my contact number and my email ID. These three things I have mentioned and I have put it as a header at the top of every page. So it uh, makes the recruiter uh, find your uh, specific details. Other than that, you can put up a box at the side, this is one more CV template that I'm talking about. Uh, at the sideline, you can put up a box and there in you can put in your address, your mobile number and your uh, contact details, email ID, your skill sets and your hobbies. You can put that box, uh, a thin box, like a rough walk uh, thing, um, separated out, cut out from the main body of your CV template, you can put it as a sideline so that it looks decorative at the same time it is informative. You can do that but what I have done is I have used the full page for the body of the CV because my content was a little heavy otherwise it would look a little dense on one side and it would look a little light on the other side. So I have done what I have done is I have put my personal details only my address, my contact number and my email ID at the top as a header. Thereafter come straight away to your career aspiration. What is your career goal or objective? And uh, what are you eyeing for? Like, where do you see yourself down five years from here? If you are applying for a core technical profile, if you are appearing for a core engineering company, straight away you will mention that I want to excel in operations. I want to learn more 
uh, and I want to gather and adapt to the skills of the industry and I want to learn more from the industry and apply my theoretical knowledge into practical applications uh, when it comes to the industrial domain. So straight away mention something like this in your career summary or career objective as a whole. Uh, what have you learned? Uh, what are your assets and where do you aspire to go down uh, five years from here? Just mention a brief summary and a brief aspiration in two to three lines at max. And thereafter come straight away to your professional experience. Firstly, come to your professional experience and your learnings and key achievements in that. So where do you have been associated with? Uh, if you have even changed roles in the same company, like I have been a graduate engineer trainee for six months in 8ZL and thereafter I have been a process engineer now for the next six months, I'm currently working as a process engineer in the firm. So I have mentioned that I am currently working your recent most uh, designation and uh, how long have you been uh, like working in that particular uh, designation and the key achievements for that particular designation so mention all of that and then previous designation previous company uh, like this so for me process engineer hzl uh, july 2020 to present and key achievements noted down and thereafter graduate engineer trainee december 2019 to june 2020 or july 2020 whatever you say it six months uh, the key achievements in the same period what are your learnings what are your achievements in the same period thereafter come to the another most important section after your professional experience your internships and trainings very important your internships trainings and projects i have headed them under the same heading internships trainings and projects together clubbed up four points that uh, clearly gives the feel of what you have done in the industry what are your contributions in the core engineering field try to keep mostly your core engineering abilities if you're applying for a core engineering company try to give a reflection of your strong core profile so whatever internships whatever trainings you have done in particular in any core organization or any uh, engineering company um, be it a consultancy be it, be it an industry try to put up more and more about that your topic of uh, research work or your topic of uh, study in the same uh, try to put up that and uh, if possible your period of walking uh, so uh, these are the things that you can your learnings from the same you can put up and recent or major achievements in the field of engineering if any you can put it up there in another section of recent or major achievements i've put up that section as well and after that comes your skills technical skills like for me the technical skills would be six sigma matlab c plus uh, plus heat transfer mass transfer because i'm a chemical engineering student i am going to mention about this and the acid manufacturing procedure in particular because i've been associated with that for the last uh, eight to ten months i've been working in the acid manufacturing unit so for me sulfuric acid manufacturing is one of my skill set petrochemical and petroleum industry because i have been regularly attached with that i am studying articles about that so for me petrochemical and petroleum engineering is one more uh, specialization that i would say uh, is my uh, skill set for me chemical technology is one subject uh, uh, and fluid mechanics is one more subject heat transfer fluid mechanics and chemical technology these are the three subjects which i consider as my core strength uh, when it comes to chemical engineering so i will put up that in my skill set apart from that your positions of responsibility that you have held up so uh, two or three points in there where you have been made the secretary of some competition or the president of some group in your college maybe or in a national level competition it's more important if it's a core engineering field competition that is a technical event uh, and you have been made a president of the same and it's a national level competition that adds up to your cv so if you have some asset like that you can put it up in uh, positions of responsibility and uh, uh, thereafter uh, comes the last point last but not the least uh, extracurriculum if you want to compress it to one page and you have no space for extracurriculum you might omit that as well i have personally made it a 1.5 pages uh, cv and i've put up the extracurriculum assets that i possess so i would suggest you to do the same if you have some really good extracurricular assets to uh, uh, portray I would say that uh, I would suggest you to put that up as well. Uh, now coming to specifically chemical engineering, try to do more internships in industry. If you are applying for the industry oriented jobs, if you are planning for the same, try to have winter training, summer internships in the industry itself. I personally had a knack about the industry. So I did my winter training in Haldia Petrochemicals. I did my summer internship in PepsiCo India paid summer internship. So try to be associated more with the industry. If you are applying for a research oriented uh, company 
uh, if you are applying for an R&D company, then more of research papers or more of project works might help there as well. And industry exposure is also important in that case. So try to do more internships, more trainings, try to learn from them and try to remember throughout your course what you have learned from those particular trainings and internships because that's what's going to help you in your course ahead or in your like uh, whenever you are appearing for the interview ahead. So these are the two things that I would suggest every chemical engineering student to do. Do one research internship, do one winter training and do one summer internship and portray the three and if possible a project work under your professor as well in your curriculum. So try to keep these four things punched up in uh, internships and trainings and try to have a professional experience. Try to have a few certifications regarding the same, uh, a few certifications maybe uh, Mm, six Sigma certification, Six Sigma Green Belt. This is the one of the most prolific things that the industrial people do generally prefer. So you can put that up as well, uh, the certification. If you have won any medal or award on a national level in core engineering field, put that up as well. One more thing that I would suggest you to do is give IEO, that is uh, Indian Engineering Olympiad. If you have uh, secured a rank in the Engineering Olympiad, that also reflects good on your CV. So try to give uh, Engineering Olympiad, um, try to secure a rank there, particularly for the chemical engineering students. It's not at all difficult because there are less number of candidates and you can easily like get a rank in IEO. So I would suggest you to do that, apply for the IEO and try to gather as much as internship and training certificates as possible. Uh, that is what would conclude your CV. And if you have any more queries, you can always get in touch with us. So if you liked our video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. Uh, thank you very much. And please download the CV that I've attached in the description box to get a reference.